Welcome back to Gruber Motor Company, the auto shop of the future. Today we're going to talk about Tesla's superchargers. But first, a little bit of history. When Tesla decided to create an electric car in 2003 and call it the Tesla Roadster, there was no nationwide EV charging network available. So, how these cars would charge was assumed to be home-based chargers and with a 240 mile range using around 7,000 18650 lithium ion cells. So when you ran out of juice, you had to find an outlet somewhere to recharge. A couple of plug-in charge cables were created for the Tesla Roadster. The most used was the one adapted to the most common outlet in the United States, which is the 15 amp three prong 120 volt AC outlet. A full recharge though would take two days. Another option was a 240 volt AC charge cable capable of charging at 40 amps with a laundry room clothes dryer plug and if traveling required renting space at a KOA style campground. A 70 amp wall mounted charger was also made available for the Tesla Roadster but despite its hefty size it still took hours to fully charge a Tesla Roadster. None of these charge options made this Tesla EV a viable car to travel in compared to an ICE car, which can be in and out of a refueling effort in five minutes or less. Tesla regarded charging issues as a barrier to EV adoption early on, and the groundwork for a nationwide charging network actually began with the Roadster. Tesla strategically set up 240 volt destination chargers at certain hotels, malls, Tesla sales stores, and service centers, but it still required hours to regain range from a depleted charge. These home-based and destination charging options for the Roadster eventually morphed into this Trident connector, which is now used on the later Tesla model platforms. To accelerate mass adoption, Tesla also wisely offered these destination charging methods as a free service. Tesla also realized the only way to mass EV adoption was a faster nationwide charging network and a supercharging method was introduced around the same time as the Model S was launched in 2012, which when compared to the Roadster is really the car that you want to take a long trip in. By changing the charge method from AC to DC conversion in the car, bypassing the in-car chargers and feeding DC voltages directly to the main battery pack, the charge times became much shorter. Placing these charging stations in parking lots with full infrastructure ranging from shops to restaurants, the half hour full charge times became manageable for travelers. They correctly predicted owning and controlling a charge delivery network like this can easily be monetized later. Charging Tesla vehicle owners for access and expanding revenue generating even further by opening up access to other EV brands and types. Giving out free supercharging for life became commonplace, but we all knew it could not last. What you're more likely to see now are referral codes given out providing 1,000 miles of supercharger for any successful referrals. All vehicles ordered before January 15, 2017 and delivered before April 15, 2017 come with free lifetime supercharging that follows the vehicle. Tesla offered lifetime supercharging through its referral program until September 2018, but it was only available for the original purchaser of the car and does not transfer if a car changes hands. Salvage title cars were eliminated from eligibility almost immediately. Why are salvage cars excluded from supercharging? Well, limiting the amount of Teslas eligible for free charging obviously has a financial impact. Safety reasons are also often cited as concerns by Tesla regarding restored and salvage title vehicles. For the same reason, a number of years Tesla refused to service and work on salvage title vehicles. Service support and documentation was largely absent for non-Tesla repair efforts. Many shops tackling collision and flood damage vehicles improvised 
and were unaware of protocols, test procedures, quality control processes. The concern from Tesla was that an improperly restored Tesla vehicle at a service center might expose personnel to dangerous voltages and at a supercharger location might even damage the charging equipment or worse yet result in a battery fire. What is behind a supercharger? Superchargers are nothing more than giant AC to DC power supplies. What you will see is a fenced off utility section at a service entrance to each service charger location, which feeds and contains the large DC power supplies, which in turn feed DC to the charge pedestals. How can you get free supercharging? Well, get a referral code when ordering your Tesla. This will get you a thousand free miles of supercharging or buy an older Tesla vehicle that has been grandfathered or buy an older Tesla vehicle that has unlimited supercharging built in. Assuming you do not have free supercharging and are paying Tesla for the use of their charging system, at $3 per gallon gasoline costs, a Tesla will cost you half of what an internal combustion engine car would. And if you charge predominantly at home, your fuel costs will be even less. Now what does a supercharger cost Tesla? Depending on the state, and electricity does vary state by state, it will range from nine cents to 32 cents per kilowatt hour. The national average is 13.6 cents per kilowatt hour. In the first quarter of 2021, Tesla had spent $23 million to feed superchargers around the country. That comes out to $92 million per year, $7.6 million per month, $1.8 million per week, and $255,000 per day to keep these superchargers operational. Let's talk about supercharger etiquette for a moment. Some supercharger locations are well planned with ample room for queuing into a waiting line. Others parking lots with limited non-supercharging parking spaces make the first in first out principle a challenge. A customer at a gas station would never leave a car parked by a pump and the same thinking applies with superchargers. To control supercharger squatting Tesla has initiated an idle fee. If you remain parked after your vehicle has finished charging there is a five minute grace period if the car is still not moved, Tesla will charge you a dollar per minute, $60 an hour, from when the vehicle completed charging. The fee is waived if the supercharger is less than half full, and it is still a common courtesy to move your car once charged. You can use the Tesla phone app to alert you via notifications when charging is complete. Supercharger upkeep. Superchargers are typically unattended self-service installations and the honor system prevails. Trash receptacles are usually provided, but despite that, not everyone seems to appreciate this vital support network. Examples of littering and even vandalism are not uncommon. As these sites grow and eventually become staffed like full service stations, much of this will be resolved. Abuses. The free fuel aspect attracts unintended abuses. Tesla's intent was, of course, to allow family sedans with primary charging in owner's garages to have a backup plan in the event that they are traveling or have exceeded their range window. Some Tesla owners living in dwellings like apartments without a charging infrastructure are using superchargers as their primary charge method. DoorDash, Uber, and taxi fleets also exploit the unregulated honor system at supercharging networks. Expect Tesla to continue to regulate and crack down on these types of abuses. How do you find a supercharger? Tesla firmware has a sophisticated supercharger tracking system built into the touch screen of each car. The navigation and route planning is included. Locations displayed and it even calculates distance to the next charger, charge time, and percentage left upon arrival. You can monitor charging progress remotely on your cell with a Tesla app. New buyers. 
If you see brand new Teslas with templates at a supercharger, these are most likely the new buyers that have not yet hired an electrician to install their level two chargers in their home garage. During the interim, they often frequent the superchargers for a fast recharge. So another common activity at a supercharger is a tow truck showing up hauling a Tesla. These are the poor souls that were not paying attention to their range and ran out of juice. Unlike the first generation Teslas, the Roadster, the later Tesla models are not damaged or disabled by running out of charge. The proliferation of charge points is and will continue to be a large part of EV adoption. Despite growing restrictions on Tesla supercharging eligibility, this program is still an unprecedented act of generosity by Tesla and watching the sense of entitlement it creates is humorous and widespread. Look at it this way. What other car manufacturer sells you an internal combustion engine car and then gives you free gasoline or diesel fuel for the life of the car? We hope this video has added to your understanding of this new way of delivering fuel in our transportation system. I'm Pete Gruber and as always, we appreciate your support of our channel and let us know how we can improve even further. Thank you.